Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. Another day to always magnify and shout at his holy name right now. Because today is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, I am so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. I don't know about you today, my brothers. I don't know about you today, my sisters. But I am lost if I don't have Jesus. I can't even think if I don't have Jesus. I can't even comprehend if I don't have Jesus. I don't know if I'm going I'm going back and forth if I don't have Jesus. I don't know what I'm doing in this life if I don't have Jesus. So I need him every second. I need him every minute. I need him every moment. And I need him every hour, every day of my life. I need Jesus. I need more of Jesus and less of me. I need him in my walk. I need him in my finances. I need him in my health. I need him in my dreams. I need him in my everything. I need Jesus. So I'm here today to always lift his name up, to give him the thanks today, to give him the praise today, to give him the glory today, because praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing, and it's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing, because the God we serve, the God we honor, he is still on the throne. Glory, hallelujah. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. So let the living God inside of you roar like the lion that he is. Give God some praise in the house of the Lord right now. Give God the praise because he deserves it all. Not just a little bit. Give him the praise. Amen. Amen. And God is looking for some real praise people. I ain't talking about y'all can easy praise when y'all watching the football game, when you're watching the basketball game. Or the baseball game, if you can praise for that, why you can't praise Jesus for who he is and what he has done? The basketball team ain't never done nothing for you. The football team ain't never done nothing for you. The soccer team ain't never done nothing for you. The hockey team ain't never done nothing for you. The swim team ain't never done nothing for you. The tennis team ain't never done nothing for you. But Jesus has done more than enough for you. So you ain't gonna tell me he don't deserve the thanks. You ain't gonna tell me he don't deserve the praise. You ain't gonna tell me he don't deserve the glory. You gotta be tripping on something if you can't praise him for who he is. Hallelujah. Give God some praise right now. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, come before you peacefully and humbly right now today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this chance of a lifetime. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do. I thank you, Father God, that you allow myself, my brothers and my sisters to come together today, Father God, to fellowship in your house so we can praise your name in your house, to glorify your name in your house, to shout out your holy name in your house, and to exalt your holy name in your house right now. Father God, there's no place that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, seeking you and loving you and worshiping your holy name. Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, the house that cannot be shaken by nothing or anything. Oh, heaven, Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. And God, right now, today, on this day, that's what exactly that we are doing. We are praying in your house. We are praising in your house. We have been serving in your house. And we have been fellowship to fellowship in your house today. Father God, your word also tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, there you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now, our telephones right now, our laptops right now, our desktops right now, our iPad right now, or whatever gadget we have or whatever gadget we're using that we're watching your, watching your service on YouTube on God. 
Father God, you have your way with us right now today, God. Father God, you enlighten us right now today, God. Father God, you continue to strengthen our walk with you today, God. Father God, you continue to put a fresh new coat of anointing, a fresh new coat of blessing, a fresh new coat of miracle over your sons and your daughters' life and head and body and soul right now today. Oh, Father God, we give you the glory right now. We praise your holy name right now, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, <clears throat> and what you're about to do. We just thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your spirit has moved through us right now today, God. Father God, I'm asking you right now today to do a new thing in my sisters and my brothers' life right now. You continue to uplift them, God. You continue to move them, God. Oh, Father God, whatever it is that's hindering them, God, from their growth from you, God. Father God, you have your way. We bind every demonic stronghold spirit that came against my brothers and my sisters in their life today, in their finance today, in their health today, in their dreams, their marriage, their business, in their ministry. It is tired. It is destroyed and terminated by the fire of Jesus' name right now today. Holy Spirit, I need you to move in this place. Holy Spirit, I need you to move through my brothers. Holy Spirit, I need you to move through my sisters right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to do some things like you never done before through my brothers and my sisters right now today. Heavenly Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise, that we are available for service, that we are available for the kingdom, that we are available right now today to first continue to do our Father's will, that we are available for our assignment, our mission, our task, our journey, that we are available for you. Oh, Father God, words cannot explain how thankful and grateful and honor and blessed and move we are, God. This is being your presence right now today, God, and we love you so much, God. We pour our heart out to you, Jesus. Father God, you know every last one our needs, we know every last one our concerns, and God, we know that you're provider. We know that you make a way out of no way. So, Father God, we lift these praise up to you right now today, Jesus. Knowing that you're listening to them, God, know that you heard them. So, God, we're going to make sure that we hear from you today, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we want to make sure that we hear from you today, Holy Spirit. And we give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise right now. And let the church come together and say hallelujah, amen, and amen. Because God is good all the time and all the time. God is good and he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praise amen amen hallelujah yes i'm here today to repent of our sins today yes we made some mistakes today yes we dropped the ball today yes we're not perfect neither one of us on this planet called earth jesus already know what we done before we did it he already know what was in our heart before we put it in our heart he already know what we was thinking before we put it in our mind but we must do our part to keep it real with him we must do our part to be honest with him and let him know what we did. Because one thing I know about God, he loves us to keep it real and be honest with him. Can you be real with God today? Can you be honest with God today? When I mean keep it real and be honest, I mean repent of your sins. Confess it right now. Let him know because he already know. There's no need to be ashamed for what you did. You know what you did. He knows what you did. Ain't like he's going to punish you. He's going to know you're going to keep it real with him. He's going to know you're going to be honest for your mistakes and your wrongdoing. Can you please do that? <clears throat> so, Heavenly Father God, I humbly come before you today to please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything God we've done wrong that was inside of your eyes today. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything God that we had in our heart today that was not part of you today. Father God, please forgive me my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, God, that we that we had in our mind today, God, that was not of your Father's will today. Please forgive us today, God. Wash us clean today, God. Purify us through your blood today, God. Wash us as white as snow today, God. Heavenly Father, God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us an opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for listening to us. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. Thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do in our life. We thank you, we thank you. In your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen and amen. And before I get started, hallelujah. I always like to give the thanks and praise to our Heavenly Father God. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father God, I just came thanking you for who you are. I just can't thank the Father God for this word. I can't thank the Father God for this message. I just can't thank the Father God for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I just can't thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank you, Father God, for our health and our strength. I can't thank the Father God for the food 
that you have blessed and prepared and put on that table. The clothing shoe that you have put on that back. I just can't thank the Father God for your words. I can't thank the Father God for your promises. I just can't thank the Father God for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now. I just can't thank the Father God for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a man that you should not lie, that we stand in your words, that we stand in your promises, God. I just can't thank the Father God because you're making a way out of no way. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a healer and you are a provider. I just can't thank you, no Father God, because you are a help. You are a protector. You are a refuge. You are a salvation. You are a rock. You are our everything. I just can't thank you, no Father God, because we know for a fact, God, that you always have our back. I just can't thank you, no Father God, that you always keep it real and you always honest. I just can't thank you, no Father God, we won't have nobody else in life, God, that we always have you, that we can always worship you, that we can always seek you, that we can always put our faith and trust in you, and whatever it is that's bothering us, Jesus, that we can talk to you, Jesus, and we don't have to worry about you going to tell in our business. I just can't think of Father God how you moving mountains right now today on our behalf. And we won't even see it right now. We won't even realize it right now. I just can't think of for our blessing right now. I can't think of for our breakthrough right now. I can't think of for our nut right now. I can't think of for our miracle right now. I can't think of our double portion right now. I can't think of our more than enough right now. I can't think of for the open doors right now. I can't think of for the door that closed. I can't think for this new season that we better walk into right now. I just can't think of Father God for the miracle. I I can't thank him for the connection. I can't thank him for the resources. I can't thank him for the rain. I can't thank him for the help. I just can't thank him, Father God, because you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and you about to pour the blessing on myself, my brothers, and my sisters, that we're gonna be able to receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you read up a God's word, let the church say amen, but let him know. That you cannot thank him enough. Amen. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters. God is so good. And my brothers and my sister, when I say he's so good, he's so good. And he filled my cup up this morning. And the word that he put in my spirit today to share with his children today. The realest thing that you ever could have done in your life was never give up on yourself. Give up on your dreams. Give up on Jesus. Give up on a loved one. But by me being said, the realest thing, and I ask God what you mean, the realest thing, say, son, everybody's not real. You have a lot of fake people out here wanting to be real. You have a lot of phony people that are claiming they real. But God said, I know the real. I separate the real from the fake. I separate the real from the phony. Everybody's not who they say they are. When you are going through a, a situation and you know your situation that you are going through and it looks so difficult, it's like it's so impossible that it can never work, that it never go to pass. But it is something about you, my sisters. It is something about you, my brothers, that will not give up. No matter how dark it looks, no matter how gloomy it looks like, 
you will not give up. And the reason why that God has put you in that place, the reason why God has put you in that predicament, the reason why God has put you through the storm, the reason why God has put you through the fire, he already know that you're real. If you was not real, he will never allow you to go through what you are going through. He will never allow you to face what you are facing. He will never allow you to go through the pain and the hurt and the suffering because 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, I will not put more on you than what you can handle or bear. God already know what you can handle. God already know what you can bear. Everybody can't handle and bear the pain. Everybody can't handle, can't not handle the suffering. But God said, I know that you could. Because you real. He know that you ain't gonna give up. Everybody's not in the storm. They might be going through a, they might be going through karma and it seemed like a storm, but everybody is not in the storm. God only put the real people in the storm because they already know that he can weather the storm. He already know that she can weather the storm. That's why when Jesus said, get in the boat and follow me to go to the other side, only real people got in the boat. Not everybody want to get in the boat. The first thing they're going to say, God, I'm not getting in that boat. Thundering going to come. Lightning going to come. They're going to be crying, God, please let me out so I can get out. Some people are scared to get in the boat because they're scared of the water because they can't swim. God is not putting everybody through the fire. Only real people go through the fire. Fake people will melt in the fire. Phony people will melt in the fire. But a real person will go through the fire without a scratch on him or her, without a burn on him or her, and they will not smell like smoke whatsoever. Come on, somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. It's right here in the Word. The realest thing that you can ever do is never give up. And I'm talking to some people right now today who don't want to give up, who don't want to give up on their dreams, who don't want to give up on their walk, who don't want to give up on their business, who don't want to give up on their children, who don't want to give up on their loved one? Who don't want to give up on their ministry? But who don't want to give up on their wife and their husband? I'm talking to some real people right there today. I don't want to talk to the fake people. I don't want to talk to the phony people. Because the fake people and the phony people, they ain't going to understand this word today. The fake and the phony people ain't going to understand this powerful message today. I want to talk to the real people. Can I talk to the real people today? Can I please do that? My real brothers. My real sisters, we're going to read from two Bible scriptures today. We're going to read from Luke 18, verses 1 and 8. Then we're going to finish off at Matthew 16. I mean, Matthew 15, 21 through 26. That's Luke 18, verse 1 and 8. And we're going to finish off at Matthew 15, verses 21 through 26. I want to talk to the real people. My real brothers, my real sisters, can you please turn your Bibles to the reading of Luke 18, verses 1 and 8. It's Luke chapter 18, and we're going to read verses 1 and 8. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen, hallelujah. Then Jesus told his disciple a parable to show them that they should always pray, and look at this, and not give up. Why do you think Jesus gave them that parable? To always pray and never give up. Because you never know when your prayer is going to be answered. Your prayer has already been heard. God works in mysterious ways. You don't know the day going to be the day that Jesus is going to deliver your prayer right there to your front door. That he's going to deliver your prayer through an email, through a text message, through a telemarketer, or through a friend, or through a relative. You don't know how your prayer is going to be delivered to you. So you never know how and when your prayer is going to be delivered to you. But he gave us this parable to the real people. That they should always pray and never give up. And I know right now today, giving up seems like it's the easiest thing to do. But that's what the faith people do, give up. That's what the phony people do, give up. That's what the cowards do, give up. And one thing I know about Jesus, he can't stand a coward. Because anybody can give up. Anybody can throw in a towel. But when you're doing that, how in the word, how in the word that you say that you're real? How in the word that you can say that you're about that life when you give up? When you walk away for something, you don't know how close you are through the, through, through the finish. 
You don't know how close you are to the breakthrough. You don't know how close you are to send the light at the end of the tunnel. How in the world can you say that you're real? It's too many people say they're real. It's too many people saying they're about their life. It's too many people want to be want to be tough. It's too many people want to be gangsters. But the whole time you're nothing but a wankster. The whole time you're nothing but a sucker. The whole time you're nothing but a punk. Because you gave up before the miracle happened. You gave up for the door open. You gave up before you seen the end of the road. You gave up before you saw the end of the life. So no, you are not about that life. No, you're not a gangster. No, you don't keep it real. And no, you don't keep it 100. I'm here to talk to some real people right now today. Don't never give up on what you believe in. Here. Only the strong is going to survive. Only the strong is going to make it through this. You already done been through the worst part of the life and storm. So now it's only going to get better later on down the road. You already went through the pain. You already went through the suffering. You already went through the hurt. You already went through the crying. What can you have next? Nothing but joy. Nothing but smiles. Nothing but the blessing. Nothing but the breakthrough. Nothing but the miracle of God is gonna oh, it's gonna manifest in your life, my brothers, and my sisters. You already went through the worst part. So the best part is yet to come. It's on its way. It's around the corner. I know how tough it is. But see, God would never put you in that predicament if you weren't tough in the first place. Come on, real people. I'm going to say that again. God will never put you in that predicament if you was not tough and real in the first place. He will never allow you to go through that pain and suffering and heartache. It was all part of God's plan. That was your purpose to go through that that divorce. It was God's purpose for you to go through that separation because God already knew how he's going to work it out. He already knew how it's going to be, it's going to be in your favor. He already know how he's going to come out of the storm, how he's going to come out of the wilderness, how he's going to come out of the fire because he know that you're real. How you know that you're real? Your heart. How do you know that you're real? Your faith. If your faith is not real, you ain't real. Everybody don't have faith. So that's why I say everybody's not real. You have a lot of fake and phony people because fake and phony people don't have faith. They question their faith. A real person don't never question their faith. They say, I, don't, I might not know a way or see a way, but I serve a God who's awesome. I serve a God that's amazing. I serve a God who will make a way for me. I serve a God who will provide. So whatever it is that you are going through and facing this year and this season, it's all part of the purpose, all part of the plan. And watch how God's going to work it out for you. Watch how things going to start lining up for you. And watch how things going to start manifesting for you because you're real. God never take a fake and phony people to be on his team. He only picked the real soldiers and the real soldierettes because he already know the real soldiers and the real soldierettes got his back. So when you got God back, don't you know for a fact that God got your back too? He is too good to fail you. He is too good to disappoint you. He is too good to even break your heart. He will never do you like that. God don't get down like that. He don't rock like that at all. Because he always keep it real. The word of God says he's a man that he should not lie. He's a man that he cannot change his mind. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Because you real, my brothers and my sisters. It's but all because of your faith. And don't you ever Ever you might give up. Because when you give up, you giving up on God. You telling God that God can't do this. You telling God that you know more than him. And there's a lot of people right now today thinking that they know more than God. There's a lot of people right now today thinking they don't need God in their life. That's why they never make it. That's why they was never recruited. Are you following me what I'm saying? Amen. He said in a certain town, there was a judge who needed the fear of God no cared about man. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. See, God will never put adversary if there's no pain. No pain, there's no adversary. See, pain and adversary and suffering and hardship go together. And the reason why they go together because it's a blessing in there. It's a breakthrough in there. It's a miracle in there. So whenever there's adversary, there's blessing. Whenever there's adversary, there's a breakthrough. When there's adversary, there's a miracle. But only real people understand that. Fake people don't understand adversary. Fake people don't understand blessing and breakthrough. They want a blessing. They want a breakthrough. They want a miracle, but they're too afraid to go through the pain and the suffering. They're too afraid to go through the fire. They're too afraid to get on the boat and go through a storm because they ain't real, because they ain't about their life. Are you following me what I'm saying? 
For some time he refused. But finally, he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. Do you see how she got it? She was real. You see how Jesus used this real woman? Jesus already knew that she was not taking no for an answer. Jesus already knew her faith. Jesus already knew that she knew that she was going to get what she was going to get. Because she said, I'm going to keep coming. It don't matter how many times I got to keep facing this man. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up till I get what I want. And the reason why that you are not doing a towel yet, my brothers and my sisters, because you say, you know what? I'm not going to give up on my marriage. I'm not going to give up my blessing. I'm not going to give up on my business. I'm not going to give up on my children. I'm not going to give up on my loved one. I'm not going to give up on my ministry or whatever it is that you are believing and trusting God for. You are not going to give up because you say, I have came too far to throw in the towel now. I have came too far to want to walk back now. I have came too far to want to give up. And God said, I know so eventually what you are doing, you are wearing God out every single day when you face him, when you seek him. Right now, God's on the verge. He's getting tired. He said, my son is wearing me out right now. My, my, my daughters right now, they wear me out. What's wearing God out is your faith. That's what's wearing them out. That's what I said earlier. Your blessing is just around the corner. Your breakthrough is just around the corner. Help me, Jesus. Your miracle is just around the corner. Your more than enough is just around the corner. Open doors is just around the corner. Rain is just around the corner. Connections and resources is just around the corner because your faith is wearing Jesus out. It's wearing him out. And he said, bitch, I got to stop. They been in the, some of y'all have been in the storm way too long. Some of y'all have been in the fire way too long. Some of y'all have been praying and praying for way too long. And Jesus said, you wear me out because you had not gave up. You had not quit. And I just knew that you were never going to quit because I would never put you in this predicament. Jesus, I was just testing your faith. I was testing you just to see what you was going to do. But Jesus, I know that you was about that life from the first beginning. I know that you was real. I knew that you was no sucker. I knew that you was no punk. I knew that you was no waste of. That's why I recruited you. That's why I chose you. That's why I considered you. That's why I was bragging about you because I knew, hallelujah, that you was never going to give up. That you was going to fight the last fight all by yourself even if you got to do it by yourself. Come on, some real people. I need some real people right now today to give Jesus some praise just for that. You didn't give up. And I know how hard it is. I'm still right here fighting each and every day. My brothers and my sisters, every day I'm fighting, every day I'm fighting, every day I'm believing. Yes, it's tough, but I know by, I know Jesus, he would never put me in this, in this place. He would never put me in this predicament if I was going to give up. He already knew I was real before I knew I was real. He already knew I can handle before I knew I can handle. Because the word of God tells us that in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, I won't put more on you, but you can handle bear. Everybody can't bear this. Everybody can't bear pain. Everybody can't bear suffering. Everybody can't bear hurt. Everybody can't bear hardship or disappointment or rejection. But you can. I can. That's why God put us in this position. Because here we know what we can do before we got there. Amen? Amen. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care by man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she get justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his, what? His chosen one. Who is his chosen one? The one who knows it's real. The one that he recruited. The one he put through the storm. The one who put through the fire. The one he put in the wilderness. You are his, you are his chosen one. You are his soldier. You are his soldier. Rep. Jesus already know who got his back. Because he have your back. He would never put you in that predicament if he knew that you didn't have his back. I ain't talking about a half back, but the whole back. When Jesus know that you got his back, he got your back. And he's going to see that you get through this. And he's going to make sure that you receive the justice, what you deserve, my brothers and my sisters. Tell somebody, I'm going to receive justice right now because I'm about to receive my blessing. I'm about to receive my breakthrough. And I'm about to receive my meal because the realest thing I ever did in my life, I never gave up. I have fought the good fight of faith. And that's what you did, my brothers and my sisters. Amen? Amen. 
God bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. What we do, we cry to Jesus day and night with our faith and our trust. That's what we do. He will see. He didn't say he might. He didn't say I think about it. He said he will see. So he's telling you that's his word. That's his promise. Numbers 23 verse 19 says he's a man he should not lie. So he's giving you his word. He's giving you his promise that he will see. That you get justice, that you will receive, that you will get your blessing, your breakthrough, your miracle, because you didn't give up. He is telling that you will see, that you will see. Tell yourself, Jesus told me he will see. He will make sure I see. So you ain't got no worries. My brothers and my sisters, God's telling you that you will see your blessing, you will see your breakthrough, you will see your miracle sooner than later, because you did not give up. Hallelujah. However, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith. On earth, he will find your faith, my brothers and my sisters, because why? You didn't give up. Let's go to Matthew 15. We're going to read verses 21 through 26. We're going to close with this. Leaving the place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyrene City. A Canaanite woman from their vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him, urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I will send only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dog. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that hour. What she do? She didn't give up. Jesus told this woman no three times. Why do you think Jesus told this number? Why do you think Jesus told this woman no three times? Because Jesus already knew that this woman was real. Jesus had told some of y'all no one time, y'all took off running. He was just testing y'all just to see what you was going to do. He put y'all through a storm. Y'all cried and said, Jesus, get I got to get out the boat. And what did y'all do? You got out the boat. Jesus knew that this Canaanite woman was real. She didn't take no for an answer. She said, my daughter is sick. My daughter need help. And the only person that can help my daughter is you, Jesus. She refused to give up. The real thing that this Canaanite woman did was not give up. The realest thing that the, the persistent widow did was not give up. The realest thing that you did, my brothers, the realest thing that you did, my sisters, you didn't give up. It's because of your faith. Jesus would never put this, Jesus would never told this woman no. That many times, and she was not real. He already knew how it was going to work out. Because why? He chose to consider her. When God chose and considered you, he already have full faith in the outcome. That's why you are not giving up, my brothers and my sisters. That's why he put you through the storm. That's why he put you through the fire. And that's why you will receive your justice, your blessing, and your brightness around the corner. Because the realest thing that you didn't do was give up. And you know God is talking to you. Give God some thanks and praise and glory. And say, God, I might not know a way I see a way, but I ain't giving up. God, you put me in this position for a reason. I don't know when you're going to do it, Jesus, but I'm still going to seek you. I'm still going to praise you. And I am still will not give up on my loved one. I will not give up on my wife. I will not give up, give up on my husband. I will not give up on my children. I will not give up on my, on, my, on my blessings. I will not give up on my business. I will not give up on my ministry. I will not give up when I'm believing and trusting you, God, to do in my life. I will not give up. My real brothers, my real sisters, I'm here today to let you know, by you not giving up, justice will be served, and you will see it sooner than later. This servant minister LT, I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name, God bless you. Amen.